Oh, hey. Hey, I'm Mark Oldman, reading up about the royal wedding and uh, surrounded by purple on my throne. Purple, by the way, you know, is the official royal color, the color of aristocracy. I'm a little troubled, though. I've been watching the mails, and I do not see my invitation to the royal wedding this week. I don't know what to do about that. I mean, I, I thought I would be, you know, next to Elton John and Victoria Beckham. I guess that's not going to happen. So, you know what, we're going to have to do the next best thing, and that is talk about wines that are absolutely appropriate to the upcoming royal wedding. These are wines you and I can have before the wedding, during, or even after. So watch ahead, because we're going royal. Number one, you got to have champagne with weddings. And with a royal wedding, I chose the Pumri Brut Royal. There's no E on it, so I'm not saying Royale, but I, I can say that too. The Brut Royale from Pumri. You pour this, and like any good champagne, Pumri is known for its creamy style. So you smell that, and it's citrusy with a bit of minerality on the nose. You taste it. It's delicious and full-bodied. Some baked bread nuances on there. Kind of classic, excellent champagne. Now, that is a big house champagne. If you want to go for a mom-and-pop champagne, what I call a grower champagne in a previous video, I found this appropriate bottle. And this is the Elizabeth Gutorb and Elizabeth, yes, for the Queen. It's also my sister's name. The great name in honor of the Queen, we pour this grower champagne. What does that mean? That means they grow their own grapes and they make the champagne from the grapes. How do you know? It has a little RM in micro fine print on the label. You taste this champagne. Mm. See, this is 70% Pinot Noir in the champagne, so it's going to be a richer style of champagne. You taste it. It almost has a, a cherry quality to it, but still a lot of citrus, a lot of brightness, but it's a nice full-bodied style. So that's the Elizabeth Champagne for our lovely queen. So you might have read that the royal reception at Buckingham Palace is going to be a daytime affair, and it's going to be mostly appetizers. I mean, we're talking about, I don't know, smoked salmon triangles and uh, Cornish pastries and delicious bits like that. So you got to go with some good white wine. So I've chosen the uh, Chateau Le Bore Wa. Wa means king in, in, in French. And this is the Bourguignon Blanc, meaning it's the white burgundy. And white burgundy basically means uh, French Chardonnay. So I like that there's king, even though it's probably someone's name. I like there's king in the label. And then you pour our French Chardonnay. And one of the great things about French Chardonnay is it's not usually a big, oaky fruit bomb. You're not being hit over the head by a you know two by four in terms of oak. So you smell this, mm, it's just kind of like smoky in a restrained way. And you taste it and it's bright and citrusy. I get apples and melons. Would be great with some appetizers uh, uh, at the royal reception. Now, not to leave the Americans out, not only do we have French Chardonnay, but we have Her Majesty Chardonnay from a, a relatively new wine company called Jack, J-A-Q-K, stands for, they often use a, a casino theme or gambling theme. Jack stands for Jack, Ace, Queen, King. And we pour a little bar, Her Majesty Chardonnay. By the way, you know, this is marriage. Marriage is always a gamble, so it's good that this has kind of a, a gambling theme to it. And you pour this, Smell that? A little smokier. There's a little more oak in there, but it's restrained. It's not wildly oaky. You taste it, and there's still bright acidity there. And this is a lighter style Chardonnay. It's got oak, 
but again, it's not a fruit bomb, and this is American style from Napa grapes. So Her Majesty Chardonnay, perfect for this majestic occasion. So on to a red wine, and what did I find that will just harmonize with this very special royal occasion? You have from Chile the Coil Royale, Cabernet Sauvignon. And if you know me, you know how much I think Chile does incredibly value-wise Cabernet, that you've just got amazing flavor intensity at a really, really good price, and this is no exception. So you smell your Chilean Cab, your Royale Chilean Cab, mm. cedar, blackberry, a little bit tannic, but still really smooth. And at this lunchtime reception at Buckingham Palace, I hope they would serve a wine like this with those little English sausages. So good. My friends Marcus and Sarah once for a party, they're English, they made these little kind of glazed English sausages. I think about them about once a month, those sausages. Unbelievable. Uh, or how about mini Yorkshire pudding with horseradish sauce with this incredibly plummy Chilean Cabernet. Now that would make all the wedding goers happy. Okay, so on to dessert wine. Weddings must have dessert wine because weddings have, uh, of course, wedding cake. And then I read that fruit cake will be happening at this royal wedding. So we have two appropriate selections. One is from Novi Vineyards in Santa Rosa, California. Santa Rosa is known for the Charles Schultz Museum, so I highly suggest you visit Santa Rosa. It's a fun visit. But here it is from Novi, the Oli uh, Sweet Viognier. I spoke about Viognier in another Drink Bravely video. It's a great grape, and it makes for interesting dessert wine. And look, we have a uh, husband and wife. Uh, Ole is actually the nickname the husband had for the wife. So this is the Sweet Viognier. You pour it. And let's see what we got here. Mmm, yes. Vanilla and apricots. It's just a nice ambrosial perfume. Mmm. You taste it. It's just very sweet and kind of luxurious. It'd be great with um, fruit cake or pound cake or, or fruit itself. Then we bring out the big guns of dessert wine. This is from the Royal Tokai uh, Wine Company. This is Royal Tokai, uh, Tokai Dessert Wine, uh, made in a very special way. It's called Botrytis. There's a noble rot that forms on the grapes. So it is royal. You, you see a crown right there. Pretty, pretty cool. And you pour it. And this is the sort of um, dessert wine that ranks up there with the world's best. Look at the color. That's almost like an amber. A 24 karat gold. You smell this. Mm, that slays you almost like a Sauterne, the famous French dessert wine slays you. It's apricots, a little bit of vanilla, and you taste it. Mm. And it's rich, but not overly so. It's got this great dose of acidity that keeps it honest, that kind of provides lift to the dessert wine. So this, if I had to choose one dessert wine for our European friends over the royal wedding, I'd say you might have to go with the Royal Tokai from Hungary. It's actually from Hungary. Very cool. Finally, ending our wedding. And, listen, I'm an American. You know, I, I wish the Royals best. But um, I have a healthy skepticism about, you know, watching the previous patterns. I have a healthy skepticism. So let's just say, let's hope this wedding is not an exercise in forlorn hope. There you go. Forlorn hope. This is a white wine. It's actually Tarantes, which is an Argentine grape. Argentine grape, uh, which is grown in America, which is quite unusual. This is actually very optimistic. It's not forlorn hope, but you try it. It's hard to try it after our dessert wine, but I had to end with this because of the name. So bright, refreshing, floral, 
and this actually gives me a buoyant hope, energetic hope, not forlorn hope. So anyway, I'm Mark Oldman coming at you, wishing you a great royal wedding viewing, or at least a royal wedding drinking, and remember, please push it.